Hey guys, playing in the garage. Thought you guys would like to see this. Playing with a shock. Shocks. I'm going to cut them apart. I knew you guys out there would like to see this, so um, let's go for it. I've already cut off, I cut off the ends. Um, snap. Just because I want to, I'm going to cut off this end and I'm going to pull it out through. I could cut off this end and just pull the assembly with that attached, but I want to do the back end. Um, so both of them have their little ends cut off. And we'll start cutting. First, I cut all the way around and pulled off the end piece. There's nothing there. And then I cut all the way around just through the outside tube and was able to remove this and the front piece. So this is your inside piece. This is part of the housing on the front. And in there is a uh, rubber seal, little metal um, washer that just protects it from this spring. And what that does is um, that pushes up against there and just holds pressure on this seal, which collapses it a little bit and holds it really tight to your um, your shaft right here okay so this is your main assembly on the back side you'll have one set of valving and you have another valving on your inside but you have your front piece um, this is a nice piece it feels like it's um it's red in there so it must be teflon lined or something to the effect it just sits right on there and this whole thing just collapses together and gets held in by the weld okay and then inside here you have your main, you know, your main valving and your your shock rod. Um, here is a little uh, plastic damper that I believe just dampens the effect of the shock coming up and hitting. And in here is all your valving, and this is just a nice hollow tube that's nice and machined inside. So you got. First valving, second valving, whatever, okay? So, in this tube, it's plugged from both ends, essentially. This valve, but the front is completely plugged. So, if this is sitting in the tube right here, you have oil in front and you have oil behind, okay? And as the tra shock travels up, it has to displace this oil, because now it's shrinking this size, so the oil has to flow down into here. And it does that, that by passing through little metered holes in here that have little valves on them and little meter holes inside here okay and as it's going up it's pushing the gas or the 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 oil down and as it travels down you're you're hitting a bump or a pothole or something that's compressing and shock is compressing it does just the opposite it's forcing the fluid from here up into here and any excess fluid it's actually pushing out the back here and into the housing and along the outside which you know this is sitting here and this never sits it doesn't sit flush it actually just kind of floats in there like this okay now this valving has to serve two purposes you can't just have a set of holes that allows us to travel the same resistance both ways because um, when you when the suspension compresses you got the whole weight of the vehicle or a quarter of the weight of the vehicle because you got four shocks pushing down on the shock it's it's going in you know it's going this way and to rebound just the tire just falling by itself you only have the weight of the tire pulling so there's not that much force so it needs to easy it needs to be easier for it to go up than it is to go down so with your valving when it goes up it needs to flow a lot easier so this spring right here applies the pressure and this opens up this pulls down and opens up and allows fluid to easily throw, flow through these little inside holes in here and past, past these little plates that kind of hold pressure on it. And the faster that wants to rebound, the actually the more pressure this spring puts on it and the less it allows it. Okay? 
Now, for it to go the other direction, for it to compress as if you hit a bump, um, the fluid is pushed through these four outside holes and this this plate is pushed against there and the harder this presses, pushes on it, the less fluid it'll allow through there. So the faster the, you know, if you hit a pothole or something, the more stiff this is, where if you hit something, you know, softer like rolling heels or something, this would allow greater amount of fluid and match the impact load. Um, so that's how that assembly works. So here it is all broken down. This applies spring tension to this valve. Here's your valve block essentially. Um, this creates a seal around these outside edges. This cre creates a seal around those inside ones. Just a washer spacer. This helps deflection of the valve, your spring, and your nut. The, uh, the bigger shock is virtually the same, has the exact same stuff up front. Has a seal, spring, front cap. Um, has the same stuff on the back. Um, the difference is it's just a lot longer, a lot bigger. Um, they bulge it out because it needs to hold more fluid, more fluid capacity. Um, exact same setup in here. This valving is virtually 100% identical. Um, the, the tube is nothing. The only difference I really found in the two shocks was this one has a spring wrapped around the outside for some reason that just can just float up, up and down. And you can see that it's been moving around. So I'm not sure if that just directs the fluid. I don't know. And then um, this shock did not have a little damper thing at the front of it. But other than that, they're identical. One's just longer for longer travel because it's a rear shock on like an 80s truck. It's a motocraft shock. This one is stamped Midas. So there you go. Hey guys, well there you go. Having fun playing with shock absorbers. Hey, if you haven't already, um, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. See you guys soon. Thanks. Goodbye.